Welcome to week nine. In week nine, we have a few objectives to conquer here. So we're going to talk about, first of all, manufacturing and what manufacturers have done to become more competitive. So I'm going to start off with this one based on my experience and research. The biggest thing is that they need to uh, be more lean and efficient as far as cutting costs. So one of the things they're doing is they outsource. And we've talked about this before. I actually gave you a pretty substantial assignment, I think, in week two about outsourcing and some challenges with that. Um, the other thing, too, is automation. I think what we'll see as we move on is more and more automation. Um, I always thought it was kind of neat. I could go to Sam's Club with my phone and shop with the app and just wind the stuff myself and walk out the door. Well, some someone checks my uh, items and all that, make sure I paid. But other than that, it's a little bit more efficient. I'm not used to it. It's rather nice. Uh, you know, I don't mind waiting in line, but and then of course self checkouts uh, with uh, you know supermarkets and the like. You order at McDonald's, there's a kiosk you can use the app, so it kind of cuts off that uh, you know efficiency issue. But when it comes to manufacturing, the goal here is to automate a whole lot. There was a big controversy about bringing jobs back home uh, some years ago, uh, and basically. I'm not against that, but what does that do to the cost as far as labor? So my, my only thought was, well, that's why they have robots. And they talk about that in, um, I guess, Chapter 9, Section 3, actually, robotics. Uh, and that helps with what they call lean manufacturing, increasing the probability of error. Uh, the idea, too, that because of technology, because of, uh, you know, just computer-aided design and the like, you're able to customize products for a person pretty quickly. Like recently, I went ahead and bought staff uh, a mug, a fun mug. I'm putting together a Christmas uh, package for them, you know, something fun for them. And a humorous mug, I created it myself. And it was just shipped to me today. So it was kind of hilarious that I'm able to do that. Or you can make your own T-shirt or, you know, there's things you can do. So for all of you, especially if you're interested in the business, there is a way to outsource the design and production of your product at a lower cost and have it shipped to you and so you can sell it and realize more profit. You don't have as much overhead that way. So that's one of the strengths of doing something like that. Uh, so, you know, the, that's the reality. And our robot's going to take over all our jobs, not all of them. Uh, I do see, though, what will happen is that when usually when jobs are substituted with something else, newer jobs are created. So be sure to be open to technology as you move forward in academia and through your career because that's important to do that. Um, as far as uh, planning, you know, basically your operations, operations management uh, some may think it's dry. I think it's rather interesting, actually. It's who, what, where, and why, basically, of how to make your business operate the most efficient manner possible. Now, there's some talk in here about just-in-time inventory control. And what I think is interesting is that automation has really helped with that. And I remember being a kid, 16, 17 years old, and taking a pen and a paper and had charts to do inventory and everything at Arby's Roast Beef and Edgar Drugs, come to think of it. And you would do counts down the shelf to count every item um, to see what we needed. You know, all right, so we have 10 of this product that can go on the shelf, and we only have seven, we need to order three. So nowadays, though, what happens is you want in the product, you know, electronically, they can automatically send a message to the distributor that at a certain point more of that product needs to be um, ordered and it's automatically done. So you don't have to worry about it. So I think that's amazing coming from those days. And there's actually some companies what they would do is hire inventory specialists. You have a team of people just run in and do the inventory work. So I thought that was really interesting. And we've changed so much there. And it's a good thing. 
And it's all about lean. Lean manufacturing, in many respects, has to do with manufacturing enough to meet the needs of the consumer so you have less surplus. The number one problem, I think, with production has to do with creating too much. So there's a point where if you create too much, it's not going to sell as fast. The value of the product goes down. So just in time, our lean manufacturing has more to do with creating the products that meet the needs of consumers, but don't necessarily create a problem where you have that too much of a surplus that you need to get rid of. So that I find that interesting too. Ah, let me see. Here's an example. I write a book. I put it on Amazon paperback. Okay, great. Um, they don't have a bunch of my books in a warehouse. I guess unless I was some famous author, which I am not. Uh, but if I were, uh, you know, that'd be another story, right? But if I wrote a book and uh, someone wanted it on paperback, they would print it in real time. So that's, and pretty quickly too, because it's just automated. And that's called lean manufacturing. So mass customization, that's a whole other world. I like this. So there's certain products and services that can be customized. So if you're interested in running a business and you're able to do custom work, uh, that'll give you an advantage maybe over trying to sell one particular product uh, that might not meet the needs of those consumers. If you're able to customize, like for instance, when I customize those mugs as a gift, I was able to create that based on what I wanted them to have uh, rather than, you know, saying maybe they'll like this. I know what they'll like, so I created it for them. And it only took a week to get here. And that's not Amazon, though. I think it was Vistaprint. They customize Christmas cards. Yeah, these things um, give us the advantage as consumers to kind of create what we want to create. And it, it speaks volumes for where we are in, in society with technology. So uh, that's the basic the basics there. So there's a little bit of um, research here about research information in chapter nine, section five, about PERC charts and Gantt charts. I want you to review this. I don't expect you to know how to create a Gantt chart. Gantt charts are uh, typically, I'm, I've used them before, to manage a business project. It shows point A to point B. Um, here's the beginning of our project. Here's the end and all the steps involved. Who's going to be part of that in each step? And when their step is done and, you know, it's complete, then this person will be delegated this responsibility and it just keeps going on and on and on and on. So Gantt charts are, are good to have, I think, especially for very complex projects. The problem that I see with Gantt charts, it's not the chart itself, it's the human aspect. So what if someone does not meet the deadline for whatever reason? Maybe there's an emergency, they're sick. Who's going to jump in and help to get us on, keep us on that project, you know, that project timeline. So sometimes we can have goals that are too, um, too lofty. In other words, you know, sometimes we don't give us enough time to complete our goals. And sometimes we give us, we give ourselves too much time to complete our goals. So think about that in your life. What have you done in your life where, you know, you decided, Oh, I want to be able to say as an example, run a marathon in a month, probably not enough time. But if you say, I want to run a marathon in four years, you might not be as motivated because it's so far down. What's reasonable as far as timelines and deadlines? It's something to think about here when it comes to uh, business and all that. Again, some think this is boring stuff. I think it's awesome. Um, I've seen some talk about robots serving your food. I saw a video, if I can find it, I'll try to share it, of someone ordering a beer and literally it was just flown to him in the uh, in the scenario. It was just, just like a little drone that would just give it to you. And that could reduce the degree of labor needed in restaurants, I suppose. Of course, there is the issue with the overhead cost of the robots. I don't know how they're going to solve that. So a lot of manufacturing in the United States has changed in the sense that there's automation and outsourcing. American companies must remain competitive. I'm giving the answers to the questions here 
on page 225. Americans must remain competitive in many respects by um, providing a higher quality product at the lowest cost possible and as a means for the company to make as much money as possible, which we talked about that. Remember, we as ma humans are maximizers. We want the most amount of product or quality product for the lowest price and companies want to make as much money as possible with the lowest cost involved. So those are the answers to those questions, just in case. So um, let me think here. I want to look at a couple more things. So yeah, as far as computer-aided design, it's a way to go ahead and design something in, uh, you know, on the screen there to the customer's preference, and then they're able just to go ahead and print it out. So just to be on the lookout for robotics. And, yes, I do see a situation where eventually it will be a robotic arm creating your burgers at a fast food place custom to what you want uh, without much communication there and probably with uh, little to no error, which goes back to the concept of lean manufacturing. And I also like this picture here. There's a concrete bridge in Shanghai that was printed. It was created through a 3D printer. So they took care of the measurements and lengths, I take it there, and actually designed the, three in, in the, designed the uh, concept by, and it was printed out, I would suppose. I guess they'd have to be a giant printer to cut out the concrete that way. But I think it's interesting. Yeah, so we'll see what happens there. Could be something to look into. But other than this, remember, time, you know, time will always change. Innovations will always happen. Technology is going to take over certain industries. But my humble opinion, this also means that other jobs will be created as a result. Thank you.